Jeremy Cook here for Haxer.io. In this video, I take a look at the Nordic Thingy 91X, a versatile programming platform for cellular IoT development. The device, which comes in a nice little orange and yellow box, is built around the NRF9151 System and Package, or SIP for those of you that like abbreviations. The device has a range of wireless transmission capabilities, along with location via cellular, Wi-Fi, and satellite. It also has an array of onboard sensors and a rechargeable battery making it perfect for remote monitoring and asset tracking. The kit comes with two SIM cards to get you going right out of the gate, and it has a quick style connector to allow it to interact with other things. Here I'll do an unboxing of the Thingy 91X and show what you can do with the demo IoT program that comes on it. So let's get started. All right, let's see what we got here. It is a Nordic Thingy 91X cellular IoT prototyping platform. So let's see what's in the little box. Well, that's that's pretty cool looking. Hmm, like that too. Looks like a SIM card of some sort and some instructions. So I'm gonna have to go over this a little bit just to see what's uh, what's going on. Um, but nice nice orange package. So that's kind of cool. So you can just. Check that out. Oh, lots of ports here. Yeah, lots of stuff to think about. I'm excited to get started with this. So if you're wondering what's inside the Nordic Thingy 91X, what's inside this uh, nice orange and yellow enclosure, well, let's let's take it apart. Kind of kind of cool, it's a, the thing's set up so that if you click these little latches back, you can just pull it open and you can see what's on the inside. And of course, that's the, the heart of the, of the Thing 91X. One thing is this is the NRF9151 system and package, I believe that's what it's called. Got stuff like a accelerometer and gyroscope, I think that's what this is. Let's see, a magnetometer, I think that's what that is. Got a button on the top, so that's cool. And a button, little button on the side. I also got a, a battery, so, you know, off-grid off, off -grid stuff or, you know, remote stuff. Battery operated stuff, you, you just it's just built in, so that's, that's very nice. And then if you want to remove this some more, I think. Uh, all right. Got that. It's on the back side. I believe this is where the SIM card goes. And like we were talking about, this is the USB C cable, the quick connector, uh, the connector for this thingy. Okay. But all kinds of stuff there. Removal battery. Let's see. This is a it says 5 watt hour. So it's LiPo 803448, 3.7 volt, 1350 milliamp hour. So 5, five watt hour. So that's, that's nice. Oh, power switch. That's. It's a nice thing. My understanding is that you have a uh, RGB LED here somewhere, which I think this that's this. And yeah, I guess it shines up through this this light pipe here. So that's that's pretty that's pretty neat. All right, there we go. Back in, undamaged, all good. Now, one thing I thought was kind of kind of cool from a mechanical standpoint, you might say, okay, so there's a button in here. How do you press it with this? There's actually a little little nub here, so that's kind of cool. So you put this back on. And you can actually feel the button pressed, uh, being pressed. Now, I, I can't really verify that at this point, but it definitely feels like it. Another button on the side, I don't think you could press that, but, you know, good if it's taken apart. So, you know, looking at this, you might be thinking, well, this is kind of cool, but how do I actually get it on the cloud? According to the Axe Write-Up, Nordic has invested significant effort to make it very easy to get users um, on the cloud. So, it comes with preloaded firmware that automatically connects to hello.nrfcloud.com which is a browser-based application built on top of the NRF cloud. So it comes with uh, SIM cards from, it says here, Onomondo and Wireless Logic, which uh, this is Onomondo, this one says Conexa, so maybe that's changed since that was written. But um, supposedly you just have to plug one of these in to the uh, SIM card and it'll boot up. So I'm not really sure which one to use, so um, yeah, maybe I'll use the uh, Onomondo. All right, I think I found the problem. The problem is that this uh, SIM card holder actually pops out to one more layer, I think. Uh, there we go. Look, there's another SIM card within the SIM card. I mean, not really, but it's just, this is the SIM card, this tiny little thing. Okay, yeah, so the corner, corner goes in the corner, I believe, right there. So this should be activated right now. And if I turn it on, I should be able to scan something on here and actually get to get to the website. So switch this power switch on, since it's been charged up some, should be good. Switch it on, and imagine I'll see a light somewhere. There we go. 
There's the light. And now I'll scan the QR code on the device. All right, so connecting, it's doing its thing. Uh, so the device has not yet connected to the cloud. Please note the SIM card and connect the first time to network and take up to 10 minutes to become activated. So still doing its thing. We'll check in with this a little bit later, I guess. So after a bit of frustration, a little bit of trial and error, the uh, blue, blue light is blinking on and off. And I think the problem was this uh, switch back here. There's one that says, I think, NRF 91 and says other one that says NRF 93. Flipped it back and forth. I think maybe it was on the wrong one to begin with. I believe it says NRF 91 right now. So I think it's switched over there and connecting and it connected. Okay, good. And oh, look at that. So LTE, two minutes sim uh, environment, 22.7 degrees Celsius. So it's 73.9 degrees Fahrenheit in here. I'm not sure what it is, what that means in Celsius. Maybe you can calculate that later. Battery, 100%. Hmm, I don't know. Two minutes on that, less than one minute on that. I don't know what that means. Um, got a, the Ono Mondo APS. So that's the card I'm using. I put a, put a C on the other one when I was experimenting. So... You know, just like so tell the two location, not telling me the location. I think you have to enable that, so that's that's good because I don't necessarily want everybody watching this to know where I live. Although I guess it's not that hard to find history, not much history, but it's a little bit there. Lots of cool stuff here. So 1,017 mega millibar. So I think that's the um, air pressure, excellent air quality. So it should be. I, I use uh, HEPA filters in here, so it was pretty easy once I had that switch right, or so I assume. So yeah, pretty cool. So to test out this environmental sensor, I built a little fire a few minutes ago and I just thought I'd um, you know, put it on there, see what happens, see if we can see the results of that on the environmental sensor on this. Put it right here, hopefully it won't get burned. So interestingly enough, now it says good air quality. You know, I didn't get much of a fire going here, but you know, a little, little worse than it was inside at least. I'm not sure if good air quality is over, it says 18 hours, so I don't know if that means average or right now. But you know, something like this, monitoring how what kind of uh, environmental conditions there are over time is probably a good application for this. Another application that seems like uh, kind of promising for this is, you know, monitoring the environmental conditions next to a 3D printer. So I've got an Ender 3 Neo, I think. So I'm going to try printing something on this and we'll see, maybe it'll react a little bit. Maybe the air quality will go down from good air quality to something different. So now that the printer is doing something, you can see here it's got uh, moderately polluted air quality. So, um, you know, that's maybe maybe what you would expect out of this, and I'm glad to see some sort of result. At the same time, you know, it's got a certain refresh rate, so maybe there's a delayed effect from the uh, fire, or maybe even, you know, some of the environment that's in there. I'm not, not really sure, but, you know, cool to see it reacting one way or another to what I would think would be not great, so pretty neat. And obviously one of the coolest parts of this setup is that I don't have to worry about any sort of power supply or anything. I just strap it on here and it's good, good to go. Monitoring everything. So here's a little map here. Um, I'm kind of zoomed out, but this is, you know, accurate to where I am right now via Wi-Fi. Uh, got the symbol there. You know, you got some different, different things that you can use with this. The uh, GPS, Wi-Fi. I'm not quite sure what those other two symbols are, but I'm not sure if you can select manually in this demo or not, but that, those are some of the capabilities that it has. Uh, you can also span this map via that. Yeah, then it's like a full screen thing. So that's, that's pretty neat. Lots of cool stuff you can do with this, uh, this little demo, but obviously the, uh, the magic is in creating your own thing. You can see after some very moderate use, I've still got 98% uh, of my data available. I haven't registered this, so I could get some more, but you know, that will last you for, for a while, you know, for at least trying it out. So one other thing I want to take a look at, if you scroll down on the interactive screen, hello.nrfcloud.com, and that's, you know, I access that through the, the um, QR code. Uh, you can actually interact with your device so you can actually see if it presses a uh, button here. So press this button, should show up here. So yeah, three seconds, button one pressed. I'll go ahead and press it again right now. And yeah, refreshes that. It takes, takes a little while. So in this, you know, doing a little research on this, um, you know, this is satellite, Wi-Fi, and then I believe this is like one cell on the right and then two cellular cells working together, I, I think. And I think it selects the best one based on your situation. So I don't know if you can select it manually or not, but it should uh, should give you the best situation for you know power and just what's available, I think. So obviously if you set something up custom, you can do, I guess, whatever you want. But still pretty neat, you could do a little demo, click the LED, click the button, and it'll recognize it. Just change it one more time, change it to orange, and I don't think you have to press the button necessarily, but it seems like that may initiate something. So yeah, pretty neat, pretty neat little feature. After some initial QR code and SIM card struggles, along with a switch that needed to be flipped, I was extremely impressed at how easy the built-in demo was to use. 
It's as plug and play as you can expect out of a cellular IoT device. For tracking assets and monitoring environmental conditions, it's very useful out of the box. At the same time, what's really exciting is what you can do beyond the pre-programmed demo. Be sure to check back for future videos where I delve further into this device, perhaps taking advantage of its quick style connector for expanded functionality. Thanks so much for watching. This is Jeremy Cook for Haxer.io, signing off.